So hi, everyone. Welcome to the Graphics Programming Virtual Meetup. We follow the Berlin Code of Conduct. And we have a Discord server. We also have a Twitter account that we will announce our meetings there. And we have a YouTube channel. We record all our past meetings there, and you can find them on the YouTube channel. So today's topic is Vulkan Mini Path Tracer Tutorial Chapter 12 and 13, which is the last chapters of the main tutorial series. Afterwards, we will, we will probably take a break and, and do something else. And then we will finish on the extra chapters of the Mini Path Tracer Tutorial. So chapter 12 is anti-aliasing and uh, pseudo-random number generators. So cur currently, we only have one sample per pixel. And we always generate it at the corner of each uh, th that pixel square. But we can have some randomized sample by generate random numbers. Uh, and to do that, we, we need to have a PRNG on GPU. And the tutorial use PCG, which is one of the recent and pretty famous you know, random number generators engine. And you can find the PCG's code on its website. And then you can just copy and paste to the shader. The idea of random number generator is it have a it have a seed, which is also the state of the of the random number generator. And every time you call that random number generator, it will do some calculation and generate a new seed that that looks like it doesn't have any relationship with the previous seed. So. There are a lot of uh, statistics property about what is a good random number generator and what is a bad one. The seed, however, is always uh, always, always an uh, uh, unsigned integer, or you can just think about it as a random uh, byte, uh, uh, kind of ran, uh, just ran, uh, uniformly distributed bits. You can think of it this way. So. So we do the extra thing is to to transform this seed into some uniformly distributed floats from zero to one, and so that's this step and output RNG float function. So it runs the PCG algorithm and then also generated a uniform distributed float, and the function looks really simple. However, it's totally unreadable uh, unless you are a number theorist. So I will not talk about that because I don't understand how it works. And and then and then what we do is we can just visualize our random number generation by for each pixel we generate a random number and. Use usable coordinates as an individual seed. Then we should get, get some white noise. And, and then the next step is actually doing anti-aliasing by, gen by generating a lot of samples per pixel. So what we will do is Similarly, we will use the pixel coordinates as initial seed. And then, and then we will have a, we will have a, a pixel, pixel, uh, pixel accumulated pixel color, which start at zero and we will just accumulate this value until uh, for, for uh, whatever sample numbers we want. And then we, uh, we say we have 64 samples. And then maybe we just accumulate the, uh, we'll first, 
So for, first, we will generate a random point on, on that sample using the using our on, on the pixel, sorry, using the step and output RNG float algorithm. And we call it twice because we, are, we want a, a two-dimensional point. And then and, and then using that information, we can generate a ray for that sample using the code we had before. And after, afterwards, we can just use the same code we had before to accumulate the final result into our some pixel color variable. And then at the end, we just divide the some pixel color by our sample size. And then we have this nice result, which looks smooth, unlike previously we have jagged edges. Now, with those setup, we can actually uh, do diffuse reflection. So, to perform a diffuse reflection, we will use uh, the Lambertian model, which can be Consider the per perfectly diffused surface, and for for Lambert for Lambert model, basically the idea is we have a union sphere, and then and then the distribution the distribution of of the ray is on, of our reflected ray on the union sphere is the cosine term of the angle between the normal vector and and our, and our reflected ray. So I will not go into that mass depth because we did that in our research in the weekend. But just a refresh, um, if we have a if we have a unit sphere like that, we where we have normal vector point upward and the center. And the, the radius of this unit sphere is two, is two. And then if we gen, uh, generate ray from this intersection point towards a point on, side, on that sphere, and then we just normalize that, we will get exactly the distribution of uh, Lambertian reflection we want. So the code here is also quite simple. We just instead have a perfect mirror reflection, we, we generate the point we want in the polar coordinates. And and then we just uh, we just do sorry not polar coordinates spherical coordinates and then we just do some calculation to transform the spherical coordinates into Cartesian coordinates and then we get the direction of our scattered ray and as a result we just have a we just have a path trace image like this. And that's it. Thanks. Any questions before I end the recording? Okay. <laughs>